No other book is as accurate as our scripture is today. In fact, my dad talked about the Bible so much because it was such a great gift to him. To be able to go from not reading at all to overnight, being able to read and to understand that he often shared it with people at work. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us, this is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us, you can call us, you can message us through Facebook. There's so many different ways, but mainly you can visit our central hub at GodSpeedMinistry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, GodSpeedMinistry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. One more time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bow before you this day. Thank you, Father, that we can come before you. The king of the universe created everything. Who knit us together in our mother's womb, creating us with purpose, destiny, and destination. And Father, today we come to praise you, to honor you, to worship you, and to dig into your word. Father, we lift up these with cancer. And I know just as this gentleman's brother-in-law is dealing with it, many of the families in this service are dealing with it and those who will watch online. And Father, we just lift up a, a plea and a cry into heaven for help against this dreadful disease. Lord, we pray for the families being impacted by it. Father, we pray for our nation, for its leadership, because, Father, you tell us to pray for the leaders of our nation that there may be peace, goodwill in our land. And, Father, America needs that now more than ever. Father, you also tell us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And, Father, we know people are dying in that war there. We ask you to put your hand a protection over them, Father. But we also ask you to bring a resolution because, Father, it is not your will that any should perish, whether spiritually or physically, but that all should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, you gave your only begotten Son that everyone who believes in him should be restored to you and find their way into their purpose in this world and in 
eternity with you. Now, Father, bless the service. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Let the Holy Spirit speak the words you would have each one here know and remember. Through the name and the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Ma'am, may I have a couple of those Bibles on that table back there? I was busy setting up for service here, just as I did today. And I heard this gentleman behind me. I turned to see this man. And he wasn't dressed like any of you are. He stood six and a half feet tall, overalls, shirt, and a straw hat, as if he had just stepped out of the field of a farm. And I turned and I'm looking at him and he said, may I have two Bibles from your table? And I said, yes, help yourself. Ma'am, may I tell you why I'm asking for two Bibles? I'm 52 years old. I've been in church two times my entire life. The day I married my wife and the day I buried my mother. You had a table like that set up at Farmington Dragway and as I was riding by, I stopped. I picked up a Bible, took it home. I began to read that Bible, I met the God of it. He saved me, changed my life. I was so excited I shared it with my wife and she began to read that Bible. She met the God of it. He saved her and changed her life. So we shared it with our two teenagers, our son and our daughter. They read it, met the God of it, and he changed our entire family through that one Bible. But ma'am, we've read that Bible. Took his fingers and he just traced the page. He said, we've read that Bible until we've worn the ink off and there's no more words to read. May I have two Bibles? You see, that's the power of God's word to change and transform our lives. And that's why we want you to have a Bible in your rig that you can read at any time. There is power in the word of God to change lives. Just as that family was changed, it also changed my family. My dad pulled up a chair at the kitchen table when I was in elementary school. What are you studying, Nene? I'm doing my English, Daddy. Well, help me, show me what you're doing. So he had me show him. My brother, a couple of years younger, was doing his reading. See Jane run. See Dick jump. Maybe you remember those books. And my dad, at the age of 30 something, sat down at the table with his two children in school and we taught him how to read and to write. My dad, at age 13 in 1943, was in the fields working in the sizzling summer sun when he suffered a heat stroke. Up until that point, my dad had been an A student at school, but that heat stroke almost killed him. Thankfully, he survived, but part of his brain did not. He went ahead and had to stay in school until he was 16, but he struggled because that part of his brain that had allowed him to read and write and do the things required of school no longer functioned properly. But now at 33, 20 years later, 
My dad is sitting at the table because he now wants to be able to read his Bible. So he is allowing his children to share their school instruction with him with the desire to be able to read. I would hear my dad who sat up many times late at night praying and dad would get loud in the house and he would pray for God to help him learn to be able to read, to restore that part of his brain. And then a miracle happened. Dad got a download. He could read the Bible. He could not read the newspaper, but he could read the Bible. And when he read the Bible, he understood it. It came alive off of that page and he began to memorize it, internalize it in his life. My dad had a bad temper. But once God began to get into the Bible, that temper became <clears throat> contained and changed. And years after I had married Gary and moved around of the house, I kept asking, who is this man that's now my father? The scripture changed his life. And that's what God wants for you. That's what God wants for every single person on earth. Why else would he dictate, write this book, and have it so perfectly preserved for thousands upon thousands of years? No other book is as accurate as our scripture is today. In fact, my dad talked about the Bible so much because it was such a great gift to him. To be able to go from not reading at all to overnight, being able to read and to understand that he often shared it with people at work. He was a machinist, not a scholar, but a machinist. One day at work, some of the men came in and said, hey, have you heard about this new machine computer that allows them to track time? They have been able to go back and date everything throughout history. Alexander the Great, Caesar, the different points in all of, of history was now pinpointed accuracy with a date. Except there was one day missing. One day missing. And they had been through everything, everything. They could not find why they were off by one day. And my dad smiled and he said, I bet they forgot about Joshua. And they looked at him and they said, who, what? He said, don't you know the story in scripture? When God had brought the Israelites out of Egypt in slavery, and took them into the promised land and they were having to defeat the inhabitants, the giants, the idolatrous people in that country because they were given the chance to accept God as their God, but they refused. They were doing child sacrifices. They were doing so much evil. And they were under the command of God to wipe out the sin of that land. And they were in a battle against these people. It's the battle of Gibeon. And night is coming. The Israelites are fighting, but night is coming. And Joshua knows that if they go to sleep and rest overnight because people did not fight at night, he knew that if they went to sleep and the enemy gained rest and re-energize themselves that it may not go well with Israel the next day. But he knew that God had given him a command to take out this group of people. So he says to the Lord, I need time. I need time make the sun stand still. And for almost 24 hours, 
the sun remained over the valley where they were and the moon remained where it was in space. For almost 24 hours, it stood still. So my father told that to these men, and evidently God was downloading it to other biblical scholars. They put that time into that calculator, and it fit perfectly. This is the power of God's word. And God is not a respecter of persons. He wants you and I to be able to walk like the man who asked for the two Bibles. Like my dad who prayed to be able to read and understand. And like Joshua. If you have your Bibles, want to go with me, I'm going to read to you from Joshua chapter 1, the book of Joshua, which is the sixth Bible verse. Wait a minute. The sixth book in the Bible, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord God Most High, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Ma Moses, son of Nun, Moses' aid, saying, My servant Moses is dead, so now arise, you and all these people. Cross over the Jordan to the land that I am going to give them to Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I am giving to you as I spoke to Moses from the wilderness and from Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates River. All the land of the Hittites to the great sea towards the setting of the sun will be your territory. No one will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Whew, wouldn't you like that? No one will be able to stand before you, or, which means to stand against you. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Isn't that the same promise Jesus Christ told us? I will never forsake you or forget you all the days of your life. Be strong, take courage, for you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be very strong and resolute to observe diligently the words which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the left or to the right so that you may be successful wherever you go. Anybody here want success everywhere you go? This book of the law of the five books of Moses should not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything within it for then you will make your way prosperous and you will be successful. Have I not commanded you? Take courage, be strong. Do not be terrified or dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's our promise even today. And God says that when we take his word, this book, this Bible, when we take it, and he's only talking about the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those five books God himself dictated to Moses on Mount Sinai. And he says if you will know and read those five first books of the Bible, then you will be successful and your way will be prosperous. Now, did Joshua do that? Joshua was born in Egypt. Remember, we read right here that he was the son of Nun, the eighth Moses. He was born a slave in Egypt. What's the prognosis, the chances of success for a slave to an evil country? Not very well. But he is with 
Moses when the children of Israel come out of Egypt. Moses is the leader. Moses is the chosen deliverer that God sent back after 40 years of being in the wilderness. God raised up a man who stuttered, a man who had been tending sheep for 40 years. These are not your graduates from Harvard or Yale. These are people who have been in the school of God who know his word or who have a relationship to him because the word has not yet been given. So here we have a slave, Joshua born a slave in Egypt, comes through the exodus, through the deliverance. He sees the ten plagues. He becomes Moses' personal aid in the wilderness for 40 years. He and Caleb were a pair of the spies who were sent into the promised land that God promised to, to send them into. And they, Caleb and Joshua, were the only two that gave a good report. They came out, maybe you've seen the pictures, and I think there's pictures in that children's Bible book back there, that two men have a staff, a, a, a piece of wood, a beam between them, coming out of the promised land with one bunch of grapes on it. I grapes don't grow that big. I grow the muscadines, and they're big, but they're not that big. But they came out of this land carrying one bunch of grapes between them on a bough of a tree. And now Caleb and Joshua say, let us go up. Yes, they are giants in the land, but we are well able because our God has equipped us. So Joshua goes from being a slave to being the personal aid of Moses, the leader of a new nation, the people of Israel. And then he becomes a military commander. So that when they are doing battle against other people, it is Joshua who is leading the people and doing great exploits under the guidance of God. When God gave the, the law on top of Mount Sinai, when Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, Joshua was at the base of the mountain, also fasting and praying while Moses was in the cloud of the presence of God. Moses gave the new word, the word of God to Joshua. Joshua turned and gave it to the leaders of the tribes, to the scribes, to the Pharisees. Joshua positioned himself to hear from God wherever it came from. And he made his way successful so that, just as we read in Joshua 1.1, that when Moses died, Joshua was chosen by God, anointed by God, to go into that place. But do you know what Joshua's greatest accomplishment was? It wasn't going from a slave to an aide to the leader. It wasn't going from the aide to the leader to a military commander. It wasn't going from the military commander into the leader of the country. It was the fact that he stayed close to God. His faithfulness to God is what set him apart. And he meditated on the word of God so that his way would be prosperous and successful. And that he the only man in history to be ever able to command the sun to stand still in the sky until he told it to move. And scripture says that there has never been another man like Joshua in all the earth. That God never ever listened to another man to stop the sun as he did to Joshua. The days are coming when you and I need that relationship with God more than ever. We need it now. I don't know about you, but when there's an issue in my family, I need to be able to call on God and know that he's going to answer me based on his word. But you see, I want that for you too. Not just me, but God. 
God freely gave his word that you and I could know his will and his way. If I could leave you with anything today, it would be that you find a Bible, and we have them back there, that you can read. Or we'll know you won't if you're watching this online. That you get a Bible that you can read. And before you open it up, you ask the Holy Spirit, the author, the, uh, the one who put all of the rest of the Bible together. The first five books are a straight dictation from God, unaltered. But the rest of the books are divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher, Jesus said. You ask him, show me what this means for me. Give me revelation. And then I pray that you find a place, a beautiful place if you can, and that you sit down with this book, just you, the book, and the Father in the Spirit. And you open it up and you ask him, show me what this means. Reveal this to me so that I may keep your precepts so that I may follow you and make my way prosperous and successful. Do you know in this scripture in Joshua 1, 8, is the only place in scripture the word successful appears in the entire Bible. And it is tied to reading, meditating, studying the word of God. There's a lot of success books out there on the market. None of them talk this way. None of them will give you the blueprint for your life. So God's word for you today is just as powerful as it was for that family, as it was for my dad, and as it was for Joshua. It has not changed. The power is not diluted by time, and the wisdom is not changed by age and stage. So my wish for you is to find that place where you sit down with this word and in prayer before God and you ask him, show me, I want to know. And just like God gave a download to my dad, he did not give a download to me, but he has given me a passion and a fire to know his word, to know the power of it, and share it with you. This word, I promise you, will change your life just as it changed that family. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you sent these here today. They came to honor you. But Father, you have come to give them guidance and instruction. Father, we pray for their lives to be changed by this word. Father, I pray now an infusion of desire and hunger for your word that compels them to set aside time, no matter what, that they give you the first rather than the last that they put this word and this time with you first so that their way will be successful and prosperous, so their way will be wise against the enemy and that you will give them the strategies to overcome the things that come against them. Father, it is your word where our faith comes from. It is your word that heals and seals and infuses us with knowledge and with wisdom. And Father, I speak that over this congregation today. Let the power of your words bring the fullness of your abundant life to them this day. Through the name and the power of Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service, 
of the music of whatever you saw or heard touched you and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212 or you can get all of our information at godspeedministry.com. We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately because we are preparing to become His bride when He returns for us or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with Him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge. To be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed Ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in Messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.